And here are our top stories in 90 seconds. And he got a lot of those kids off the streets, um, got in back into school, started doing homework. A Colorado boxing coach is being remembered not for the work he did in the ring, but the lives he changed outside it. Being the coach that he was and being the father that he was, he wanted to set an example for um, other coaches. Tonight, the community is honoring a man who helped so many turn their lives around. More vaccination sites are allowing to walk up to their clinics. No reservation required. We're trying to um, get ahead of the communities that are a little hesitant or don't have the resources to get a vaccine are going to them. Three Loveland police officers involved in the arrest of Karen Gardner have been fired. What you saw in the vid video, not the level police department. But Garner's family attorney says this doesn't go far enough. Every single officer to have laid eyes on this case and what happened to Karen Garner needs to be fired. Plus, you couldn't have asked for a better park day in Colorado. But our next front arrives this weekend. Just how low temperatures will drop. And coming up later, a Colorado woman donates not one, but two organs to help save lives. I really just feel I feel really grateful to have been able to do this. Good Friday evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. Sometimes life knocks us down, but one Coloradan made sure the kids in his community got back up and fought back. Today we remember a boxing coach legend in our community, Ray Romero. Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo takes us through a career promoting change and creating championships. Each blow is powered with precision, one landing a legacy for Ray Romero. He's known in boxing rings across the city and state. He was good. He was slick. He, he had a good solid attack. Jesse Mora, a former boxer and the interim chairman for the Colorado Golden Gloves, a nonprofit, met Ray at a boxing match. Well, I never called him Ray. I was always Monk. At 18 years old, Monk competed in one of the most prestigious tournaments in Colorado, the Golden Gloves. But his skills as a coach made him unforgettable. He was one of the greatest. He had a heck of a coaching manner. A passion he pounded into every boxer. Oh, there I am. There including his son, Adrian. Uh, Salvador Hernandez. Who can still hear his father in the ring. I think that one is more of a... You lost that round, you gotta get in there now. Calling the shots as he sat in the crowd. Double up on the jab and, and get in there and work his body. <laughs> A voice that only lives in memories. Unfortunately, today was the day that he, he passed. Monk was 83 years old. He battles years of dementia. But the change he sparked across countless minority communities will never be forgotten. He got a lot of those kids off the streets, um, got in back into school, started doing homework. His motto, no school, no training, instilling a shift in life. Discipline, leadership, um, respect, and uh, you know, being, being a team teammate to some of these other guys were, it, was, it meant a lot to these kids. Monk coached some of the best boxers in the nation. Here he was awarded a, uh, a trophy for a coach of the year. In 1988, he was chosen to coach the USA international team and won the championship in Moscow. I'm so proud of my father and his legacy. In 2012, Ray was inducted into the Colorado Golden Gloves Hall of Fame for his dedication to the boxing world and his community. He was a tough coach, but he was a respectable coach and a lovable coach. He cared for his boxers. A care and love weighing on a community ready to go the distance to assure his name lives on. Now, Monk's funeral will be held at the St. Catherine of Siena Church off Federal Boulevard. The family plans to announce a date and time in the coming days. Adrian tells us the kids his father coached are now coaches themselves and also mentors for younger generations in the community. It really showcases that powerful impact he had on his community. Reporting live in Denver, Addie Guardo, Denver 7. He leaves a legacy. Thank you, Addie. It's getting easier to receive your vaccine across the state. This weekend, the six mass vaccination sites across Colorado will all be open for walk-up shots, meaning you don't have to make a reservation. Those sites are Ball Arena in Denver, the Ranch in Larimer County, Dick Sporting Goods Park in Adams County, the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs, the State Fairgrounds in Pueblo, and Grand Junction Convention Center.
The city of Denver stopped requiring appointments at any of its five community vaccine sites today. Air Tracker 7 flew over the sites at Montbello High School, the MLK Rec Center today, and starting next week, Denver Health's mobile clinic will also stop requiring reservations. People have strong beliefs on all things these days, as well as vaccine, as you've seen. So rather than trying to change their thought process, we're just here to offer education, help answer questions. And if they decide they'd like a vaccine, we're going to be so happy to vaccinate them. About half of all Coloradans have received at least one vaccine dose. Still a growing number of Americans have received their first dose, but have skipped their second. So what should you do if you missed your second vaccine appointment? Doctors say go ahead and get that second dose no matter how far out you are. They say of course the recommended time you are told is best, but getting that second dose at any time after your first dose will help boost your immunity. Today, Governor Polis continued his tour of small businesses around the state, visiting businesses in Thornton, Denver and Edgewater. He says it's a way to connect with business owners on a personal level. Visiting uh, local small businesses like uh, Soul Place, Babylon, Squadron, uh, and really just hearing these great inspiring stories of how uh, people are uh, powering the Colorado comeback and uh, businesses is, is growing and strong and really learning about some of the issues that affect small businesses and how we can uh, provide more relief or, or help them with any, any state policies that uh, can make doing business a little bit easier here in Colorado. Governor Polis is visiting small businesses across the state to help them rebound. Three Loveland police officers involved in the violent arrest of 73 year old Karen Garner have been fired. Two others have been reassigned. Loveland is now considering sweeping change as a result of Garner's arrest. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez has a closer look. Our goal, our goal at the Loveland Police Department has always been to make our community proud. We failed and we are very sorry for that. Loveland Police Chief Robert Tyser, noting his department is under the spotlight. On the ground. On the ground. For the way it handled the arrest of a 73-year-old woman with dementia, announced personnel changes today. Former officers Austin Hopp and Daria Jalali, along with former community service officer Tyler Blackett, are no longer employed with the Loveland Police Department. The arrestee, Karen Garner, suffered a broken arm, dislocated shoulder, and sprained wrist during an arrest for allegedly shoplifting $13.88 worth of items from Walmart. <laughs> The officers later recorded laughing and joking about Garner's injury while reviewing body cam video. That is not the Loveland Police Department. Chief Tyser not happy to see that video. The Loveland Police Department is comprised of men, men and women that are out there taking calls for service right now that are working very hard and honoring our community and serving with uh, integrity and value and being trustworthy. That's who the Loveland Police Department is. What you saw in the vid video, it's not the Loveland Police Department. Every single officer to have laid eyes on this case and what happened to Karen Garner needs to be fired. Garner family attorney Sarah Schilke says the chief himself should resign, that LPD was just hoping that Garner didn't have strong advocates and that the pop wasn't as bad as it turned out to be. Tyser says officers are people who handle situations the best they can. Sometimes they make mistakes. He said he started in police work when he was 22. Me personally, I didn't know a whole lot. But as I started becoming more mature, started learning, I found out a lot more through training and experience on how to interact with the public, how to serve. He says officers will continue to improve through training. Shilke says Longmont PD needs more than training. This is not an infection you can just cut out at Loveland Police Department. Loveland Police Department has sepsis, and we need to clean the whole dang thing. Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. Today, Karen Gardner's family released a statement through their attorney about the firings. They say, quote, the chief made no reference to Karen personally. The inhumane treatment of our mother was ignored and his continued support of the department was the focus. Being on the board is like having another full-time job. We all see them as an important role in kids' education, but should being a school board member be a paid position? At least it would help support people, especially when you look at uh, the compensation for helping with childcare. But not everyone is on board. We have a 360 conversation. 
Mild temperatures across the front range tonight in the 40s and 50s, but we do have some changes headed our way this weekend. I'll have your complete forecast coming up. And coming up later, a Colorado woman's selfless acts are saving lives. I really just feel, I feel really grateful to have been able to do this.